Welcome to Goshen Prepping. Thank you for joining us. They're calling for an extremely hot summer this summer. And when it comes to dehydration and problems because of heat, there are three specific things we need to look for. Do you know the signs of these? So I'm going to give you all three. I'm going to give you the most severe at the end. So stick with the video. Let's jump right into it. Number one, heat cramps. And this is actually a really simple concept, by the way. When you sweat, you sweat out water, but also you sweat out electrolytes. The more profusely you sweat, the more electrolytes or salt that comes out of your sweat. Have you ever actually exercised and then you take your shirt off, throw it in the dirty laundry, and the next day you go back and there's like this white stuff all over it? That's all salt. The more you sweat, the more you get rid of electrolytes. Now, the specific electrolytes we're talking about are potassium and some magnesium, some sodium too actually ends up there. But what happens is when you get rid of that, that is actually what causes um, cramps, muscle aches, Charlie horses, et cetera, that type of thing. So first off, you want to make sure that you replenish these, these electrolytes. I do this through three different means. Number one, one of my favorite electrolytes is, it's a keto one, Kiss My Keto. Electrolyte powder works really well to replenish it. Another one I take as well. This is actually the one that comes in little individual packs but electrolyte pack it has lemonade, watermelon, cherry palm, and blue raspberry. I'll put a link below for these, by the way. But these are nice. I pour them right into a water bottle and drink it that way. And then lastly, I take these pills, which has calcium, magnesium, and potassium in it. Uh, two pills, especially after working out, to replenish all those, all those salts. Now, you get these cramps, very painful. Charlie Horace, we're talking about even not just cramps, but muscle spasming. You ever had that before? The best thing you could do is simply just massage it try to get rid of it as far as massaging it goes. It actually works very well. But a lot of people think it's just magnesium, which honestly, magnesium is not the number one cause of this. It's deficiency in potassium. Now, the potassium itself doesn't simply just come out of the system, but what happens is when you sweat, you release a lot of water and potassium, but your body trying to retain water, it's going to try to pump sodium back from your urinary system, back in your bloodstream, trying to get the water to follow along. And the pump that actually brings the sodium in makes you dump your potassium. It's called a sodium potassium pump. So it basically pumps the sodium in to retain water and you dump your potassium. The more dehydrated you are, the more potassium you're going to lose. Will the magnesium cause uh, electrolyte imbalance and dehydration and cramps? I'm not going to say it's not, but most studies show, in fact, almost all of them emphatically say that it's actually potassium is the biggest one you can do. Now, stretch it out, massage the area, especially your calf. You ever had those very painful? Drink a lot of water, get your electrolytes. Some people actually drink pickle juice. That's not for me. Um, I'm not for the pickle juice. But anyway, that's your first step when it comes to dehydration is simply having cramping. And that should be a very big warning sign for you. You need to do something before we get to stage two. Number two, heat exhaustion. So you sweat. The reason you sweat is as the water goes on your skin, it evaporates in the air. And whenever you actually have a liquid going to a gas evaporation, it takes heat with it. And that's why we sweat. Our body sweats to make it so all the heat comes off, cools our body off. What happens if you're already actually in a very warm situation? Maybe you're actually jogging down in Florida and it's like 95 degrees outside with high humidity. How much evaporation is going to take place? pretty minimal. So when that happens, it can't decrease the body, your body temperature very well. So as your body temperature remains elevated, you'll actually go into uh, what's called heat exhaustion. In this, we're actually seeing all kinds of symptoms that take place as your body temperature starts to rise and you're sweating profusely. Headache, nausea, dizziness, weakness, irritability, of course, thirst, and of course, heavy sweating, an elevated body temperature, and a decreased urine output. And now we're actually really hitting dehydration, by the way. And if you ever have dehydration, when you start vomiting, oh, it obviously, it can be fatal, first of, all, first of all, but you'll feel like you want to die. It's just horrible stuff. You need to cool the body down and it's not going to happen through regular sweating. So you need to go to a shady location, uh, loosen or remove clothing, take off a shirt if you can, uh, take cool, wet towels, put them in areas where you actually have a lot of blood supply. For example, the top of your head. That's why it's always hot because there's a lot of blood vessels there around your neck, around your carotids, in your armpits, even in your groin. Nice, cool towels there will help you cool down. And obviously, in this case, you need to replenish water and replenish electrolytes. Again, heat exhaustion. Now we're in stage two. We do not want to hit stage three. Stage three, heat stroke. This is exceedingly dangerous. And we'll talk about what to look for on this as well. It, it, simply put, your temperature rises, and because the temperature rises, it can actually cause brain damage. Your body can't cool off. It is life-threatening, and in this situation, you have to call 911. It is a medical emergency. Here's what to look for. Confusion, altered mental status, slurred speech, loss of consciousness, 
Look at this, hot, dry skin. Because of the brain damage, the brain tells your body stop sweating. Or you can still see profuse sweating as well, even seizures and a very high body temperature, sometimes over 104. So call 911. Again, you need to get them to a medical facility. But in the meantime, it's the same treatment you can do for heat exhaustion. In this case, you're looking at put them in a cool, shady spot, loosen or remove clothing, cool towel on the head, on the neck, on the armpits and the groin to cool them off, drink water and electrolytes. Of course, this is only if they're conscious and coherent. You're not going to ever give them drinks while they're unconscious. That's a bad thing. Uh, but again, it is a medical emergency. And as days grow hotter, which we're definitely looking at some hot days, especially this summer, you need to make, make sure you pack things in your bug out bag. At the very least, I would put these in your bug out bag, but I'll put a link below for all those things. And again, I know some people like pickle juice. I don't see you packing that in a bug out bag though. And even though it actually does help, but potassium is the key, potassium and rehydration. Tell me, what do you do for your electrolyte imbalance? What do you do for electrolytes? I'd like to know, put it in the comments below. Thank you for watching.